Hello YouTube! Today I'm going to be starting a series on how-to guides and tutorial videos. Today's topic is torrenting. I'm going to show you step-by-step -step instructions on how to use torrenting technology to download films, music, software, ebooks, etc. I'm an information security officer who's been working in a major university in the United Kingdom for a number of years. I've got quite a lot of skills and experience in IT and related topics and I'm going to share those skills and knowledge with you through these videos. What is BitTorrent? In a nutshell, BitTorrent is a peer-to-peer -peer file sharing technology. It enables an individual and an internet connected device to share information with another individual who is running the same client across the internet. Um, this technology is extremely resilient. There's no central location. It's dynamic so the connections are made on the fly. It, it provides high bandwidth, so you can quickly transfer large volumes of data, such as films and movies, quite quickly. Um, also, it's extremely difficult to censor or control. This is precisely why governments and internet service providers don't like it. Um, that's why on BitTorrent technology you'll find a lot of illegal content, such as uh, copyright infringement of the latest movies and music. But it also has a lot of good, because it, it enables people in oppressed countries such as China to obtain information which they might not necessarily be able to get via the official channels due to censorship. Right then if we make a start I'm gonna open up my virtual machine. This will mirror the machine you see at home. I can't use my personal machine because I've already got BitTorrent installed and configured. Right, I'm going to break this down into three sections. Section one is going to be about installing and configuring the BitTorrent software. This is a software that you will use to manage the downloads. Section two is about finding torrent sources. This is the website you use to download the initial torrent, um, to identify the movies, music, and software, etc. that you want to find. Section 3 is going to be focused exclusively on security, how to remain anonymous and operate as securely as possible. In part 1 of the video, we're going to be looking for a download manager. So if you launch your browser, in this case I'm using Microsoft Edge, but it'll work equally as well with Firefox or Google Chrome. If you navigate to a search engine, in this case Google, Right, you can either research the latest and greatest BitTorrent manager here, or you can use one of the well established ones such as uTorrent or QTorrent. I use QTorrent a lot, so that's what we're going to focus on in this video. QTorrent is a very popular download manager for BitTorrent. You go to their website. uTorrent is also very popular. You go to the download section. QTorrent is available for Windows XP, Windows Vista, Windows 7, Windows 8 and Windows 10. We're going to be focusing on Windows 10 but the principles are interchangeable. It's also available for the Mac platform, Sierra, High Sierra, etc. So if we download the 64-bit installer I'm going to get the 64 bit. Okay. It's always good to do a virus scan on anything you download from the internet, just in case. Although, it, as long as it comes from a reptile source, you should be okay. If we install the software. It 
it's quite a light package so it shouldn't take long to install you just want to go next accept the terms next right I'm going to create a desktop shortcut you want to associate all torrent files with this software and magnet links and web pages will open up and obviously you want to make a firewall rule yes it's only 114 meg install close that close the windows little legal disclaimer click I agree okay now that we've installed QTorrent we're gonna launch it right this is what you first see at the moment there's no queued downloads if we go through some of the menus you can add torrents manually but you don't need to when you download from a website it'll automatically open the QTorrent manager if you look in you have the ability to pause and manage the downloads statistics is quite handy it tells you how much you've downloaded over time and speeds etc right if we focus on tools options there are a number of preferences here such as you can customize the language you can set the client to start on Windows startup most of these you should keep as the default but if we look at downloads this one you might want to change to a directory of your choice where the downloads will go once they're finished again it doesn't really matter if you leave it as the default it's just if you want to use another drive uh, the connection I recommend you leave this as the default you do have the ability to block IP addresses and traffic shape but there's no real need because we're gonna be covering that in the next step security Again, speed, if you're on a metered connection, you might want to limit your upload and your download. But if you've got an unlimited connection, just leave it as is. Again, just leave these as they are. I've already reviewed them previously, so they're fairly secure and there's nothing controversial here. Don't need any of this advanced features. Don't need any of that so if we click OK there if we have a quick look through the menu on the left hand side all your downloads will be listed in all you'll have the current downloads in here in the seeding category they'll be the downloads which have actually finished but are still in the client you can still remove them if you wish by seeding them you're continuing to allow other clients to download from you and your completed list and then you have the ability to pause and resume torrents. Um, most of these you're not going to really need, so don't concern yourself too much with these. So if we close the torrent. Now that we have finished downloading and installing the download manager, Qubit Torrent, we now need to find sources of torrents to be able to download content. To do that, we need to open up a browser. The one we're going to look at today is the Pirate Bay. The Pirate Bay is a notorious website for BitTorrent. It's extremely well known, extremely popular and it's been around for decades. And the great thing about the Pirate Bay is they've been sh trying to shut it down for decades. But because there's so many mirrors, which means a mirrored website. So for instance, the piratebay.wtf. That's one of the mirrors. So every time they take down one website, such as .com, another one pops up. Again, .space. Um, there are numerous sources of torrent, like Torrent Freak is another source. Um, I'm going to list all the sources I know in the description of this video. But for the purpose of this video, I'm going to focus on the Pirate Bay. Um, I recommend you use one of these proxy lists so if one website does happen to go offline or gets blocked by your ISP there's plenty more so if you just click on any particular one 
French one. This is the pirate plate. There's plenty of content on it, but what I tend to use is top 100. You can also search for anything you like. For audio, video, applications, games, porn, and other such as ebooks. If you look at Total Top 100, this is just an example to show you what's available on torrents. Yeah, you're free to search. And most popular things, um, like the latest movies, will definitely be listed. If you look at, uh, these are the most popular, Avengers Endgame 2019 in 1080p resolution, Godzilla King of Monsters, Microsoft Office Pro Plus 2016, Chernobyl Complete Season 1. What you see here are the cedars and the leeches. A good cedar means the content will transfer quicker to you, so the higher this number, the better. Whereas the leeches are the people who download it but then remove it from their client. So anything that's popular will come down extremely quickly. Give us something legally I can download to demonstrate to you. Ubuntu is open source, so there's only 22 cedars, so it's not going to be particularly fast, but as it's just for a demo. Right, this is what you get you get the, the name, these are just the website metrics where it's hosted in the website, applications, Unix. How many files? One, the physical size, 1.86 gig. Make sure you've got that available on the drive you're using to save them to tags and so all you got to do is literally click get this torrent and because we associated torrents with the application you get a little pop-up basically Microsoft Edge is trying to open Qubit torrent because associated that software with it just click yes and here you have the option of saving it in a different location etc this is fine for an example just click OK and it'll start appearing here sorry, it'll start appearing here and you're downloading here there's, this. there's the percentage of the download there's the status that's how many seeds you can see here's, there's the download speed and there's the estimated time until completion click on the graphs you can see how well your downloads are doing over time there's no data here yet because it's only just started if you right click it you can do quite a lot you can um, pause it force resume if you've paused previously um, you can limit the upload rate and the download rate for that specific download etc um, but if you're just after downloading content most of these features you don't have to use so you just leave it go right once the downloads is complete it'll go into the completed items if you want to find out the file and you can't remember where you've saved it to you can either look under tools um, options and see what preferences you had for the default destination or you can click open file folder that's what we're downloading. It's not complete yet. Right, now that you know how to download, I'm going to briefly discuss uh, some of the security you should be thinking about. First off, you should have a browser pop up blocker. When you're browsing some of these torrents through the Pirate Bay and other sites, there will be pop ups, and some of those pop ups can contain malware, viruses, they can hijack your session. It's nothing serious, but it's something you need to be aware of. Additionally, when you're downloading torrents, you should be virus scanning them before you run them. This is especially relevant if you're downloading applications and software. Thirdly, you should be looking at the reviews of the torrents before you download them. This will give you an insight to how reliable the content is, if the content works, or if the content is dysfunctional for whatever reason. 
use the benefit of the community to inform you before you commit to downloading it. You should also consider using a VPN. A VPN is a virtual private network. The VPN provides you with a layer of anonymity and privacy by obscuring your network traffic from your internet service provider. It does this by encrypting the link between you and your VPN server. This makes it extremely difficult for your internet service provider to monitor or log your activities. A VPN prevents your ISP from blocking, filtering or otherwise interfering with network traffic which can be a benefit because sometimes a court warrant will require an ISP blocks a certain website, i.e. the piratebay.org. A VPN prevents legal repercussions as VPN providers do not comply with legal requests. Likewise, most VPN providers do not collect logs, so cannot technically comply with legal requests to resolve IP addresses. Additionally, VPNs are often in foreign destinations outside the direction of the pursuing actor. A VPN is a simple, cost-effective and time-proven method of protecting your privacy and anonymity and is a great solution to help you layer your defences. I'm going to give you a quick demonstration of CyberGhost 7, the VPN recommended by TechRadar. We launch the VPN. You get a menu similar to this one. Select your server. They got servers specifically designed for torrenting, high bandwidth. Select a random server with low load, and then we'll do. If you go to settings, now this is one of the important features of any VPN. If the connection to the VPN server is lost, your internet will go down. It won't revert back to just using your plain standard internet connection. It will actually block the connection, which is what you want to do. Otherwise, the traffic will be transmitted across an unsecure network effectively. So that is always on. And once we're connected, I should be able to prove that we're connected by simply looking at my IP address for a few minutes. Okay, you can easily verify whether the VPN is working or not. Simply Google what is my IP address. Go to one of these websites and it'll give you some metrics. That's obviously my fake IP address which has been routed through. And we know the VPN is now working because it's detecting the ISP, which isn't my ISP, and Finland. In a nutshell, that is what a VPN does. Thanks for watching. Thanks guys, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you look in the description of the video, I'll give links to Torrent's websites and VPNs. If you need any more information, please drop me a message. If you've enjoyed the video, please consider commenting, giving a thumbs up, and maybe subscribe. Next week's video is going to be on encryption. This is part of a new series of videos where every week I'm going to be bringing you a new tutorial. Until then, see you next time.